It's time to feel the rage. Welcome to Film Rage, where we talk movies in theaters, streaming, and classic films as well. Directors and actors, beware as you cannot hide from the rage. My name is Bryce, and I'm part of the Film Rage crew, which also includes Jim. Hello, Jim. Hey, hey. And also, we have the merman who puts his pants on one leg at a time if the rumors are accurate. Is this true, Murray? Not always. Wow. We're learning more about Merman every week. That's right. So with the introductions out of the way, let's rage on. Well, thanks to all who've been supporting us. If you love our independent podcast, please support us and join the growing Film Rage community by joining our membership at buymeacoffee.com forward slash Film Rage YYC. All members get special episodes and content only for members, and all members that sign up will get a free limited edition special Film Rage merch item. If you cannot commit to a membership, you can still buy us a movie rental and dare us to see a terrible movie. Shout out to Alberta, our largest listening province in Canada, and our largest listening state in the U.S. is still Virginia. Virginia is for lovers. It is for lovers, and we love Virginia. Uh, also, vive la France. As Viva la France. As they hold a solid third place for our listeners from countries around the world. Thanks, France. Oh, wait. Oh, just love this music. How about we dance? Streaming, 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 and we're... We're streaming, Jim. And we're streaming, Murray. What did we do? Streaming. Nice move there, Murray. Right. So, uh, this week we uh, streamed a little something on Netflix. Beckett is, uh, we streamed Beckett, sorry, uh, from 2021. 20, no, we streamed Beckett. Is it the Beckett or just Beckett? It's just Beckett. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Uh, Beckett is the story of an American in Greece that gets into a car accident that kills his girlfriend, and from there he finds himself on the run as being hunted. Why? We're not sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's so true! <laughs> the, fil the film starts rather lifelessly Lee, as we observe a couple on vacation. They decide to get out of the city late one night to avoid the social unrest that is impending. And as a result, Beckett, played by John David Washington, falls asleep at the wheel and gets into a car crash, killing his girlfriend. From, yeah, from here, the film switches into another gear as Beckett visits the crash site and finds himself getting shot at by the police. What? The tension is pretty much maintained from this point to the end as both of us and... Both, both of us. <laughs> yes, and both them. us as the audience and Beckett try to figure out why this is happening. As Beckett tries to figure out what is going on, he tries to get to the U.S. consulate in order to save himself. The middle hour or so in this is quite good, with John David Washington portraying the systems analyst in an unfathomable... An, an, I cannot fathomable? talk... Unfathomable? Unfathomable. Fathomable bubble. Situation in a very real way. I really thought this was on its way to being Mondo, and then the last 10 minutes happened, and the film that I was quite enjoying turned ridiculous. <laughs> 
all of a sudden, the system's analyst turned into James Bond. What a surprise. The legwork of the, of the first 90% of the film that painted the picture of this average guy with basically no physical ability was cast aside as Beckett turned into a badass that could fight. And at one point, he is jumping off a ledge to land on a speeding car. What is going on? I think I might talk about that, too. Oh. <laughs> I also did not buy into any of Beckett's motivations in this. I'm not sure the guy I witnessed at the beginning of the film would be jumping off buildings, risking his life for someone he doesn't even know. This turned into an illogical mess. The last 10 minutes of this was so silly that it ruined the entire film. Bad beginning, excellent middle, and an inexplicably ir irrational, irritating ending Leave me with mo no choice but to say, Beckett was a rage. Ah, poor Beckett. <laughs> I really stumbled through that. Honestly, I have not been drinking. That's, yeah, he doesn't do that very, you know, unconsciously anyway. So, uh, John David Washington, yum. And... He's awesome. That's all you had to say? Uh, the cinematography was delicious, so delicious, that I wish I saw this in the cinema. Can you kind of pick up what I'm putting down here? I can. Okay, good. So we're all on the same page. This would have been much better in the cinema. Yeah, then you could have seen that uh, ridiculous the jump, jump off the park. Oh, wait, I want to talk more about that. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry Laura, Laura. As this takes place in Greece, I guess I got a little bit hungry watching this. Greek food, by the way, in Greece is amazing. I'm just saying. Uh, I love the fact that whenever they spoke Greek, there was no subtitles. That was cool. This was the. This is fantastic. <laughs> we were in there's his things, shoes. There's things in this movie. We, the audience, are in the exact same state as our hero during the entire film. That was well done. And. So we are 42 minutes into this film, and I am as confused as our hero about what the fuck is going on. Which is good. And I am loving it. Yep. No clue as to what, where, when, how, or why he is being a person, quote unquote, of interest. I was thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying this film until we get to the U.S. Embassy. So for you, it was the last 10 minutes. But when we got to the U.S. Embassy, I'm like... The yeah. obviousness at this point Absolutely. of the conspiracy was way too overt. And the, the whole scene with the agent Tynan, played by Boyd Holbrook, just freaking annoyed me. The whole scene, everything he was in was annoying. Not so much that I hate the film, but enough that uh, an amazing thriller lost a lot of steam. Because I am pretty sure the embassy does not take people out of the embassy. No if they are protecting them to go, and I'm gonna use this again, quote unquote, visit a good cop. Yeah. I'm sorry, he's already in the US, he's on US soil. He doesn't fucking need to go anywhere. Nope. And I'm just shocked sometimes uh, with this type of writing in films. I'm just, I was flabbergasted because it was so it good. It was so good until then. Yeah, and actually you said you didn't like the first part, but I kind of love the first part. I mean, it's corny. And you see them falling in love. You know they're madly in love, and they're setting you up. Were for they? Something. I was. They just, were in love. They were awkward. It was. It was cutely awkward. I kind of liked it. I. I actually don't normally like that thing, but this I wasn't minding. They were. Uh, like, oh, all right. Um. Yeah. So this could have been done in all different kinds of ways to make this more believable, but yeah, they didn't. No. Uh, plus, the end of the film, to your point, was a little over the top. Uh, especially perfectly timing a landing on a car from three stories up. When you can't see the car. Yeah, exactly. He was, lis he was listening with super hearing. He's because he's a super spy he's a super now. Spy. He's James Bond. He's using the Force. He was using the Force, but he's not even in the Force movies. Well, maybe this is the Star that Wars the Black sequel. guy in the Star Wars movie? No. no it's not the same dude. Um, so, uh, yeah, I was... I was a little disappointed, at least. Granted, he did not come out unscathed in that fall, 
but I found it a little too the Americanized fact that land it. for a Greek film. Yeah. Like, I mean, how many Greek films have we seen in the last few years? <laughs> and all of them this usually one. are pretty messed up and fun. And yeah. th- this this was just well, I felt there was just too pit, much American influence. Pity is Greek one film. of my Pity is one of my favorite movies of all time. If you want to see a Greek film, it, yeah, that's it. So I've seen good. it. It's great. The ending should have made me rage as it did for you. Oh man! But. Dude. I liked seeing John David Washington running around Greece, so I'm going to still give it a man. And you know, we we've had this discussion before. How how yes. for you it can be a ten minutes of a movie can yes. destroy the movie. But well, I liked. To, I liked to your point, movie. it was probably more like the last 20, 25 minutes. It's true, it's, but I mean, there was a lot of really good in this. So I just, it was so I good. Get to rage. I couldn't get to rage. I, I was, was raging at stuff that was happening. Yeah. But the movie, I still enjoyed. I'm glad that I saw it because I love him, and I think that uh, there was a lot of good action in it. Yeah, I wish somebody. I wish that the uh, the internet connection just would have zonked out at 25 minutes, and then. <laughs> Somehow every copy of the film got deleted off the face of the earth the so that I could come up with my own conclusion because the one that was presented before me was ridiculous. It was stupid. It was so bad okay, that it so, makes me rage. Okay, so if he would have just made it to the embassy and the movie ended, wouldn't that have been like a perfect ending? That would have been fine. I would have been what? Was cool. Like, it. <laughs> he he survived. It. We don't care about all the other characters. Yeah, all the side yeah. stuff going on. Whatever. It doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, so we got a man and a rage on that one, people. So, you know, pick your poison on it. <laughs> all right. Well, we also went to the cinemas. Hey, I'm not done yet. Oh, oh did, you see did you watch it? Oh, I, saw it. Oh. I recommended it, didn't I? Uh, did you? Oh, yeah, I, I did. did. I thought I did. No, I did because it was on Netflix. <laughs> oh, right. Murray did because it was on Netflix. Did it automatically load to your phone? No, oh, I thought okay. I thought I did because it had John David Washington in it. I was like, that's and I thought I that's watch. why I would want to. But I'm sure glad Murray did. Hey, Murr, what'd you think? What'd you think? <laughs> well, thanks for asking. <laughs> All right, and you know what? I want to say I love how close you are to the mic right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, this film lost me in the first ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't had, blame him. It had a nice European setting. Why is they using the Greek scenery for both beauty as well as danger? The film's greatest gift, though, has to be the prompt separation of Washington and Vikander, two stars of astonishing beauty and even more amazing lack of chemistry. Excruciating first 10 minutes consists primarily of them being romantic and lovey-dovey, and that is much harder to survive as a viewer than any of the threats to his life that follow. So yeah, I pretty much tuned out then, but oh, it actually picked up. Oh, okay. Um, a conspiracy that he gets pulled in is also pretty thin, but the thrills of watching him fight for his life, the real reason we're there anyway. And those are actually done pretty well. There isn't much to Beckett as a character, but he carries the film with ease. It's a very physical performance, all jumping off cliffs and trains and all parking structures. And his continued ability to function is completely unbelievable. He breaks his hand, gets shot, gets stabbed several times, mm-hmm. and still manages to jump off parking structures onto a moving car. Funny how we all picked that up. <laughs> uh, this film just left me mad. Oh, there we go. Two mads, two mads in a rage. There it's you like go. Almost like almost part of a full house. There you go. <laughs> all right, Jim. Now we can go to the demo. Okay, thank you. But the, our favorite is to be on the planet. Yes. And this is a movie that um, Murray's been waiting his entire life to come My out. whole life to see. That, that he could see. Well, that's probably not true. Uh, At least the last, in the last two years. Ever since Star, Star what's that? Space Invaders came out. It, the, first thing, <laughs> the first thing that Murray The video was, game from the Ryan 70s? Reynolds, if Ryan Reynolds could be in a movie with, with Space Invaders or Missile Command, I want to see it. Oh, don't worry, I'm sure it's coming. I've got a, I got missile command on the, on the old go. video game. Your, I got, a, I got a, roll, your, I got the rollerball. On your, your three thousand oh, games, yeah. missile, missile command with the rollerball. That's what we're doing this weekend, people. <laughs> playing video games. Brad Bryce is playing. Missile All right game. then. Okay, well, free guy. A uh, bank teller basically discovers he's actually an NPC, which is a non-playable character, as in computer generated. Speaking of video games, inside a brutal open-world video game. AKA Grand Theft Auto, 
mm -hmm. uh, Fortnite, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And yeah, he basically discovers his self-awareness journey and he uh, decides he doesn't want to get, uh, he doesn't want to be in a, work in a bank that gets robbed 20 times a day. Mm -hmm. All right. I can start, I guess, then. Eh? Yeah, you do, baby. All right. Rotten Tomatoes. All right. 83% nice. tomato meter. 95% audience score. There you go. Certified fresh, whatever the hell that means. Mm -hmm. IMDb, 7.7 .7 out of 10. Fresh. New York Post, 100%. Strangely, for franchise-loving, trademark-clutching Disney, which now owns 20th Century Studios, their free guy is totally original an absolute He's building, blast. He's building to his review. I just wanted to start with other people's opinions. <laughs> so he's not allowed. I can't be accused of being Ryan Reynolds' bias. I know. Although I you am. are Ryan Reynolds' bias. That's a given. This one is, I'm not the only person on the planet who loved this movie. Just okay. Oh, you that. loved it. Okay. <laughs> now, I am also a huge fan of the video game Grand Theft Auto. Nice. I spent so many hours just driving around the city looking for people to beat up and faster <laughs> cars to steal. <laughs> Hell, I need I need to do the admissions sometimes. A friend of mine taught me an especially brutal trick of picking up hookers, having sex with them in my car, nice. and as soon as they get out, run them over and take the money back. Nice. Sorry, this is in Grand Theft the game. Yeah, right? Vice Not City. The Vice City. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, Grand Theft Auto. So we're clear. That's the kind of game it is. That's exactly what this movie is. It Basically, was. you can do whatever you want. And the NPC, the Ryan Reynolds of the world, the guys that get shot and beat up yeah, multiple they're times. They're the hookers that get run over. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Cruel, yeah, but it's a fun game. I especially love the death race, like running over people with your car aspect of it. Yeah, yeah. The bigger the car, the bigger the... Bus. But I digress. I loved everything about this film. The fast pace, the senseless violence, the cheesy overacting. The film was full of surprises, kept me laughing for the whole two hours. As a side note, I recently saw a documentary about game shows hosted by Alex Trebek. What? At oh, the, yeah. There was a, at, at the end, he said his biggest regret was not getting to act in feature films. Aww. Well, sir, you have done it. R.I.P. The cameos in this film were amazing. Now on to the Kiwi in the room. Uh oh Ah, Taika Waititi. Mm -hmm. I wish I could say I loved him in this film. He just didn't quite get there. To quote Dr. Evil, you're semi-evil. You're quasi-evil. You're the margarine of evil. You're the Diet Coke of evil. Just one calorie, not evil enough. There you go. But this film is still a hard-driving, fun-filled, freaking mondo. Nice. Bryce, would you like to rebuke? I'm sure he will. He will. Free guy. <laughs> that says it all right there. Yeah, it kind of does. <laughs> He's building up the tension. There's a, there's a little sweetness happening right now. Free Guy was fun for a while, but as a repetition of watching Ryan Reynolds do the same thing over and over again wore thin, so did the premise. Having said this, there were some laughs, and everyone other than Reynolds were very good. Lil Ray Howery as Buddy was great. Uh, Utkarsh um, Budkar nice. as Mouser shines as he always does. I actually love, love that guy. I wish I could pronounce his name. Yeah, he's, good, he's good in you everything he's done. Uh, I should. Taka Watiti had some amusing bits, but his character Antoine was a little too one-dimensional to be the primary villain. Mm. Jody Cromer as Molotov Girl was a pleasure to watch. Uh, unfortunately, Ryan Reynolds as, as Guy was in full-on Ryan Reynolds mode. He seems to be playing a PG version of every character he has played in recent memory. From Deadpool to Michael Bryce in those awful Hitman's Bodyguard movies, all the way back to Van Wilder and Monty from Waiting. They are all the same guy. He is full on Chevy Chase mode all the time. Still, the rest of this movie had an undeniable energy with some standout performances and some very funny bits from everybody but Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> Free guy was meh. Nice. <laughs> well, I bet you that came as a surprise to Murray. That it wasn't a raise? Yeah. A huge surprise. Exactly, right? Well, you know why? Because this movie was pretty good. So, if you like playing video games and enjoy the movie Wreck-It Ralph, then you will love this movie. Ryan Reynolds is, in my opinion, his funniest in a while in this film. 
some of the lines and dialogues that he came up with was, I, in my opinion, very funny. Every time he went into the coffee shop, it, I was laughing my ass off. Uh, in fact, I was going to mention, though, prior to this movie, I was literally saying, I am so tired of him and his one-dimensional character. <laughs> Don't get me wrong. This is his same character he always plays, but for me, it was less annoying. I still think he isn't a great actor, but this film is fun. It does a great job of bringing the gap of video game and movie better than any other live action Wreck-It Ralph type film that I've seen probably in the last, let's say, 10 years. The story has influences from Ready Player One, and as I mentioned, Wreck-It Ralph, and what the hell? Let's also throw in some Tron for good measure. It's very Disneyfied, which is at times fun and at other times can be annoying. There is a lot of time I was laughing through this film. I loved a lot of it and found the story fairly well done, as well as all the NPC characters were cleverly designed and had a personality and a character which made them enduring. All that, but it is a cookie cutter ending and a storybook Disney for my liking at the end. So as much as I had a good and at times great times and enjoyed this film a lot, it was just a man because it was, you know, just it predictable was and just regular Disney film. I'm not blaming it on anybody other than Disney. It's just a Disney movie. But it's not a Disney movie. It's Disney like. No, movie. it's not a Disney movie. They had so many Disney characters yeah, because, in the movie. Because they got permission. Yeah. Because they, I bought, know. they bought 20th Century I know. after the movie was and made. Exactly. It's still a Disney like. Was movie. not shot by Disney. No, nope. to be clear, it, it may have not been. It may be owned by them now, That's, but it wasn't at the time. Right. So maybe they were advertising their sale because this movie is very Disney like. Wreck It Ralph was Mondo, by the way. Yeah, exactly. It was Tron. I don't watch. Wasn't cartoons. as good. So you know. Yeah. So anyway, what was I saying? Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> it's a good summer blockbuster type film and a lot of fun. For the entire Disney loving family. There you go. It's a man. It's a man. Even the Disney Disney hating adults can enjoy it. There you go. They liked it. Some of it a lot. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. <laughs> I get it. Move on. I enjoyed, <laughs> I enjoyed it. It was fun. It wasn't terrible. All right. Well, we also got to see another movie called Don't Breathe Two. Did you see this one too, Mert? I did. Nice. Mm -hmm. Do you want me to go or do you want to yeah, you go. Wanna hit that, that don't breathe out of the park? <laughs> okay, so this is, a, I'm going to sort of, I've been using these quotes a lot today, sort of a sequel uh, set years following the initial deadly home invasion that was don't breathe number one. Mm -hmm. And... We still have Stephen Lang in it. Well, thank goodness. Being, doing still blind, blind stuff. Doing blind man thing. Yeah. He's still blind. Still blind. And he's still, 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 still kicking out. And punching <laughs> dick. The music and score was awesome. The tension was pretty good. There were some great jump scares. And every single one that happened made me jump. As as I'm, sitting, I'm sitting there. And he's just, every time they intended a jump scare, all of a sudden I got this just giant, uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was crazy. If I had Jim was like, popcorn, it was like, oh, it would have been everywhere. It would have. But you know what? Be, I think it was because I was so engaged in the music and the sound in this. I was yeah, in Fair enough. Fair it was enough. really well. And, and to me, the atmosphere of. I would just like in, look to my right every time. What know, is like, going on with you? Why are you doing that? Uh, so many fantastic practical effects, lots of blood and yeah. gore to keep you juiced up. Some yeah. crazy, horrific. Uh, comedic moments like chopping your mama's arm off to get yourself free uh, or when your mom's gonna you know take your heart and uh, it is almost too poetic and just before you go under she turns to you and says thank you thank you well, thank, really, you for, thank you for dying so yeah, so, thank you, darling, so, so I can so, make, so, so, so to kill you for your heart so no, no no I'm gonna kill you so I can make crap Exactly. 
and every and everybody around is on board because they need that. They need that need, crack. They, they need, need that crack. crack money to keep on going. Exactly. It's because it's the only avenue of income. That's obviously. the only way they can. Yeah. I mean, they can still break yeah. in places. They do that well. Yeah. They're all gonna die all and those, starve if they don't kill this girl. Have no other skills apparently. Exactly. So I like the suspense, the creepy factor, and some of the for and um, for the love of me, I can't remember part one. So as we're watching this, of course, I had to go back and watch it when I got home that night. Uh, and, <laughs> and man, Stephen Lang is still buff and does know how to kick ass and punch sticks as a blind dude. The CLF, played by Madeline Grace, did a great job of not annoying me through the entire film. So good on her and not annoying me in itself is worth the celebration for this film. I enjoyed this vicious, murderous, psycho, fucked up mess of a film. I liked it a lot, but just not loved it. Well, well done, part two. But just well done enough to get a high man, as some of it was repetitive after a while. And of course, there was a few dumb parts, let's face it. Yep. The blind dude getting all the way, walking into the city in an evening, Made no sense. He was he was led by the dog. Yeah, yeah, that would have happened like in seven hours. <laughs> they live. They showed them driving for it hours is. to get into the city. Yeah. yeah, they were moving. But you know, uh, as always comes from torture porn esque films, it was a fun ride, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mer, hit us. All right. Well, uh, before I watch this film. I had to see Don't Breathe One. Okay, so you've never seen one. Guys, I don't remember if I'd ever seen it. Yep. Turns out I hadn't. <laughs> oh, the first one was okay. Predictable, entertaining. Yeah. Uh, this one was completely different. Yeah. Uh, I actually questioned taking the bad guy who kidnapped, raped, and killed people from the first one and making him a good guy in this one. <laughs> I was actually pleasantly surprised. But he's, he, he's more of a dad now. He's still a bad mofo. Yeah. Um, first half of the movie had me checking my watch every five minutes. So, yep. willing the time just to pass because they just, <laughs> I, I didn't jump once, by the way. I haven't jumped in years to any movie. So, uh, this didn't do it either. No. Nope. Mm -hmm. uh, well, halfway through, it actually got kind of interesting. There were a few unexpected plot twists, and the ending was freaking awesome. Yes, it was. Uh, in fact, the ending almost turned this into a Mondo. What? Almost. But in the end, it was just a man. Oh. Hmm. Sounds like it's familiar. Uh, well, what do you say, Bryce? Uh, don't breathe, too. Uh, it, it wasn't awful. All right. It was, it was better than I thought it could be. Mm -hmm. uh, it had solid practical effects. That, that was pretty much the highlight of the film for me, the, mm -hmm. the practical effects. Gooey, gooey. Ultimately, the film would either sink or float based on the performance of Stephen Lang as Nor Norman Nordstrom, the blind anti-hero badass of the story. Lang kept this film afloat with a solid performance, as was the case in the first Don't Breathe. And just like the first one, this was mad. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Wait, 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 back it up though. Right. Didn't you think? Didn't you think the CLF in this was pretty good? Mm. You didn't like her at all. She's all right. I thought Madeline Grace did a good job. Yeah, she's fine. That's it. Fine. I mean, she's all right. She, the, the movie wasn't on her shoulders. It was on no, a man's it, shoulders. It is it's, a lot on his shoulders. And sure. to, his performance is so good that it's really not a good movie. <laughs> But, but he's in it and there's stuff Stephen there. Lang is so good that it makes it much better than it has any business being. But you know, Murray, to your point a little bit about this film, um, because the, it actually he actually brings it up in the movie where he's talking about the fact that I've done things and I've done yeah. bad things. Yeah. Keeping in mind that they broke in to steal his shit in the first movie. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Well, yeah, but still, but he, 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 he him, reacted very darkly. He kill them. Like, <laughs> like, just don't kill yeah, them. Hey. Like he was, he was cruel and sadistic in the first one. Yes, he was. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, wasn't he was. He wasn't even just a dark. Just but, a, like but shooting at him. Dark uh, shooting at him is one thing, but yeah, no, he went out of his way to be cruel at least. Yeah, not, mention, not to mention the woman who was tied up in his basement. Nice. That he basically inseminated. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's basically, he basically he raped her. Person. Yeah. No, it's true. 
So yeah, it took me a while to actually accept so, that he was actually the yeah, good guy in this movie. I actually, I actually think that this should, needs to be a trilogy because I kind of think I need a uh, an, an origin story. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's let's go back to the war. Let's see what made this guy the way he Maybe is. He was just blind this whole well, life, did, did you guys stay? For, I don't for, think for so. I think it's been implied. Wasn't it implied yeah. in the first one that he was? Yeah, Maybe. yeah, he was, he was definitely blind in the first No, no, he didn't know blind. that. It was implied, though, that he, he wasn't always blind. He was blind oh, based I on... I thought he... Something in the war. I yeah, thought. I thought oh, it was from the war. That's why I want... Yeah, IED or something. But, yeah. Uh, but no. So like, there's a reason why he's the way he is. Now I want part three so I can find out exactly what made this. Maybe he just got angry. He was angry at the world because he was blind. Well, that's, that's what that's what I'm just, saying. But there's a... a dick. It's exactly what I'm saying, Jim. He's angry at the world. Why? I want to know. Oh, okay. That's what the prequel will be. Care. I'm just glad I want care. a part three. Okay, glad he's well, sure, I'll take the part three. I don't mind. I don't know who's going to play a, a younger version of him, though, because he can't go back. It can't be Stephen Lang mm. play, playing part three. Maybe Stephen Lang has a child. Maybe. Junior child. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. Oh. Oh, don't breathe. It's a, uh, what is it, Mark? Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. From Good there, for part three. <laughs> let's uh, let's class it up with a little Aretha Franklin documentary. I almost said documentary, almost docudrama. That's what I meant to say. Uh, respect is the story of the rise of Aretha Franklin from childhood choir singer to international. Singer. Jennifer Hudson stars as the iconic singer and does it competently, I guess. Uh, the performance is, although her singing's great, her performance is competent. Uh, the performances by the supporting cast are stellar, however. Marlon Wayans as Ted White does his job as I'm not sure I could have disliked this character anymore. Um, Titus Burgess as Reverend James Cleveland is quietly brilliant mm. in his role. Horace Whitaker as Reverend Franklin was also very good, as always the case with Horace Whitaker. It's almost redundant. Um, then there's Mark Marin as Jerry Wexler, and he's always fantastic. This guy is not only hilarious as a stand-up comic, yeah. but he's a tremendous character actor. I need to see more Mark Marin. Yeah, yeah. For sure. I thought he'd be great talking yeah. about The problem, oh, is he in Glow? He's like the manager. Oh, he's like know. the best part of the show. Uh, yeah, I'm sure but he it's, is. But, but it's, 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 it's TV, so I wasn't yeah, going Yeah, he doesn't pro know I probably won't is. end up seeing it. <laughs> uh, the problem with it is the same as most biopics, is you cannot cover decades in two hours. Anyone out there making a biopic, I'm begging you, please pick one moment from your subject's life and write a really good script about that moment. It is impossible. To cover someone's whole life in two hours, or in this case, about two hours, uh, or about, uh, sorry, in this case, about 20 some odd years in two and a half hours. I will say, however, the ending was very poignant, and the choice to end the movie with the 1972 Amazing Grace concert was a perfect way to conclude. Still, too much content to pack into a relatively short period of time caused this film, like many biopics that have preceded it, to be mad. Well, well, well. I am going to disagree with you on the Jennifer Hudson front. I thought she was brilliant as Aretha Franklin. As was Mary J. Blige, which you did not mention, I thought was amazing. The casting in this film, as you had mentioned, though, was fantastic. I can't believe you didn't call Mary J. Blige. I thought she did a great job. I don't even know who she plays. Oh, okay. Well, then don't worry about it. We should talk about that later. Who'd she play? She was, she was the she was the other I forget the uh, the per character that she did, but she was the queen before Aretha showed up. Well, that fur coat. Right, right, right. You know who it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dinah uh, Dino Washington. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, yeah there you probably. go. Um, through to about twenty minutes, and I was not really loving the direction style so much, but was still very much enjoying being in the presence of one of my all-time heroes being portrayed in film. This, in my opinion, was one amazing scene captured in a moment followed by another amazing scene captured in a moment. Mm. I think part of my dislike at the beginning of the film 
was that I didn't feel the connection to the director's feel for Aretha's character. But as the story kept unfolding, I enjoyed the story and direction more and more. They captured all the main pain and suffering that Aretha went through, but did not dwell on it. This is one of the most accurate biopics that I've ever seen. If you go and do the bio fact check, it covers everything that's pretty much accurate. It felt genuine. Yeah. There was some directorial and story embellishment, sure. Uh, but what we saw in this film did actually happen pretty close to reality. And as a huge fan of Aretha Franklin, I loved and absolutely loved they did not dwell so much on specific incidences and stayed focused on telling her story and sharing her greatness. I pretty much cried all the way through this film from start to finish, thinking as I watched how unfair life has been and had been to Aretha and the whole Black community that lived through the same points in her time frame. In the end, with her playing her song for Barack Obama, the actual real uh, show was the icing on the cake. I could have watched every minute of her life being retold on screen for another 20 years, just basically living in the movie theater for the rest of my life. But alas. That would have been fine, but that's I, not what happened. I will have to wait for the sequel, Aretha 2.0. She was a powerhouse of a singer an amazing civil rights ambassador. And this movie took me on an emotional journey of a big part in her life, although only 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was motherfucking only. Mondo to me. I loved it. I, I know what you're saying about it, I, but I think- I hate when they spread everything so thinly that I don't get a, I don't get a true picture of any point but in her life. But, but I th the reason I'm saying, well, I, I'm biased because I'm, I'm such a big Aretha fan, but the, the thing that I think I did like about it was they just touched on points of it that were pinnacle in her life that happened through her journey and they didn't stay on it. I agree with you. I think And that's the reason I didn't like it. Yeah, see I, I like that. I kind of wanted to I don't want I don't want a I don't want a Cole's notes version of her life. Oh. I just don't. Well, let's hope that now they actually see I would love to see this documentary. <laughs> I'm trying to see a documentary on like they haven't made a documentary about her, so it's, yeah. it, at least not one that sure it's on its way. Yeah, it it should be on its way. I, that's that's what I'm hoping. But I fully enjoyed this. The music was amazing. It was the single. The yeah. music all the way. through. Music was great. And, and actually, there's a lot of it was great. I loved a lot of this, but it's it falls into the your typical biopic where they just don't they don't they they try to cover too much in too short a period of time, and it just. You can't cover someone's whole life in two hours or even 20 years of their life. Yeah. I'm glad I'm glad it ended where it ended. That, yes. That was ab absolutely the perfect ending. Yep. I love that ending. Yep. But people, it's worth seeing. You, it is. If you're an Aretha fan, if you're an Aretha like fan, me, go. If you, you're you'll not, like, you'll get a Coles Notes version of you know the first life. first 30 years. Wow. And then I bought um the <laughs> I bought the concert. Oh, um, did you? Yeah, I did. Afterwards, I went. I've, I actually have never watched the film, and yeah, I, Amazing I, Grace. I, I, I need to watch that. One yeah, it, it uh, yeah made uh, me cry all the way through. That I'm so I did. <laughs> did Murray see it? No, I did not. Remember, he said he hates Jennifer Hudson. And he I said I don't too. like Jennifer Hudson, and I'm not a huge Peter <laughs> Franklin fan. Yeah. There you go. There you go. And I work on the weekend. So I'm there you go. Everybody's work. Everybody else is working for the weekend, and you work, work on the weekend. weekend. I work on the Murray's working right. on the weekend. All right, all right, all right. Bye. 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 Uh, sometimes I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet, 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 sweet rage. There was a bunch of little nuggets through this whole week that kind of made me minor rage. But I have a full on rage. So the thing I'm rage about this week is sequels that aren't really sequels and they confuse me. As, as yeah. I'm watching Don't Breathe 2, I'm kind of like, wait a minute. And then even after the movie, afterwards, we were kind of like, okay, what happened? Like, what ha what would happen in the first one? We, we both, 
after the movie was over, we were both like, did, was that really a sequel? Yeah, it, was, it didn't feel like, like a sequel. What was the connection? I yeah. don't know. And, and then, then we were thinking, was it the girl? Like, girl the girl at the end of the... the end of, yeah. I think well, when you see, watched... And I watched the first one right before I went to see the second yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, I kind of wish... And yeah, was. like, it, I thought the second one would be him tracking down the woman who stole all his money. Yeah, but didn't... But so it wouldn't. Wasn't at the you end of the first one, at the first one... There was like there, some there was, weird was, scene at the end with the, with the girl and they're yeah. on a train or something, maybe. Like she had a daughter? Or well, no, like the, the girl who survived at the end, that was her sister. There you go. They were going to California... With right. his money, yeah. So that's see, that's it but made me think is that's he, the scene I remember. But he didn't track her down. No, but that's and then the eight scene years I later. He's been raising this orphan that he found on the street. Yeah, in front of this house on this meth lab that's on so fire. So it's completely unrelated. Completely unrelated. I'm, I'm, trying, I'm trying to. Yeah. I'm trying to. I'm trying to take this girl that's with him and connect it to the first movie, and yeah. there is no yeah, connection. Exactly. Because I remember. I just remembered no. the last scene of the movie. And I'm like, oh yeah, there was something with the girl and another little girl at the end. I thought that he now had that little girl. Nope. That's right. what I thought. But totally it was wrong. So yeah, you don't do that. If you're gonna make a scene. Exactly. And I don't even know if I should rage about it, but it's you know the best I got this week. I get I didn't have much more I needed to rage about, but I, I maybe you know what? I'm switching my rage. I'm raging at myself. I should have done what Murray did. I should have watched, I should have watched part one before I went and saw part two to remind myself what it was about. There you go. Yeah. All right. <laughs> ah. my rage this week is having to watch Ryan Reynolds play the same character figuratively <laughs> winking at the camera for the entire movie again I know we can do better than this. I've seen it, just not very often. I've gotten to the point where I can't take it much longer. He is a few more mailed-in performances like this away from being repulsive. That is my rage. Well, he'll never make the repulsive list, but I know what you're saying. <laughs> I, I have to agree with you that I I need him to do something different. Just do something different. Because you're right, we have seen him. In the middle of his career, he tried some different with that buried movie and you know <laughs> and he's always been good like yeah he, buried, he was great he was great in that even at the stupid amityville freaking remake that he was in he was he was fine yeah, you know, he was at, least he was doing some, at least he wasn't winking at the camera the whole time you know not, he, he's not literally winking at the camera see him wink he up. never he's figuratively, he's figuratively winking the yeah. entire he time even talk to the camera like in deadpool <laughs> yeah, well, I was like waiting for that. It, it, it does. It kind of feels like he yeah. is. Everybody's in on it. And it's just. Uh, it's it's almost like he's he's in Chevy Chase mode. Yeah. Or this is why Chevy Chase rocked off. Mode, right. Like uh, yeah. yeah. Kind of gotten that. Or or what's his name? Um, Johnny Depp mode. Right. It's like you get pigeonholed. It's I, like Hollywood I knows guess, he's, this is successful for him. Yeah. Twenty years in Johnny so, Depp mode. Yeah. yeah. Right. Where. He's now pigeonholed as this weirdo, and and now Ryan right. Reynolds is now pigeonholed as the guy who's the swarmy uh, kind yeah, of uh, back talking. Yeah, dude. smart ass. Yeah, come on, Ryan. Like we even when he's even stuff. when he's playing an innocent kind of character mm -hmm. like this, he just still comes off as a smart ass because that's how he, that's all he does. I don't like the smart. Yeah, smart is a good word. Yeah, well. but my, Murray likes that's the smart. My rage. Yeah. Murray likes the smart. Maybe he just likes to do fun, entertaining movies for his fans. Maybe that's it. Repetitive. Repetitive. And his fans love Repetitive. it. Repetitive. Not his fault. You're not one of them. Dummies! Big D. All righty then.
Merman. Bring some joy. Well, the top 10 Ryan Reynolds movies of all time. I wish it was right now. Oh, I'll, no. I'll have to talk about 10 minutes about how great he is. But, okay. So he's, oh. he's changing it. He's freelancing. Oh, he's free guy in his Merman list. Right. After the long wait, I finally got to see Free Guy this week. Whoop, whoop. As many people know, I love me some Ryan Reynolds. Yes. I don't care what you say, Bryce. Is he your hall pass, by the way? <laughs> if you're going to be gay for one night, it's with Ryan Reynolds? Exactly. There you go. Uh, nice. But actually, I'm not going to talk about him for a change. You're welcome, what? Bryce. I came across an 80s classic film with my other favorite Vancouver actor, uh, Mr. Michael J. J. Fox, Fox. Yeah. which I'm sure Bryce will hate as well. What? It was what? The Secret of My Success from 1987. Oh, wow. The seen? Secret of My Success is I live. Hey, hey, hey. This is one five moment. hours a day. Hey, man, no ranger. He's this is my whole minute. I'll just, just quit now. <laughs> well, take two extra minutes, Murray. He just ate into your time. He yeah, you just basically you roll over my punchline. Thank you very much. <laughs> Hit us with it. I didn't hear the first part. It was him. It was critically panned, yet underrated comedy at the height of uh, Michael J. Fox's popularity. For fans of his TV show, this was a movie version of Alex P. Keaton. Nice. Story goes as such. He's a well-educated kid from Kansas trying to make it big in New York. When he gets there, his job has been eliminated. He's forced to go to his uncle, who gets him a job in the mail room. Mm -hmm. He can't help but see how incompetent his uncle is running the company, so he uses a fake name and identity to improve things around there. This is complicated when he first accidentally sleeps with his uncle's wife. What? And then falls in love with his uncle's mistress. What? Hilarious. Hilarious. Michael J. Fox is in good form as the engaging young hero of his light comedy represents everything inoffensive about the 80s from the executive ladder-climbing, likable scamp, and the power-dressed female. A decent star vehicle and pure sugary 80s fun. Strength of this film is undoubtedly its soundtrack. The score composed by fellow Canadian David Foster. No way! Yes, freaking way. It features an A-list of 80s musicians like Roger Daltrey, Night Ranger, Pat Benatar, Bananarama, Katina and the Raves, and of course, the classic by Yellow. Oh, oh yeah. Beautiful. It will never be accused of being a deep film or even thought-provoking in any way, but it was a charming film with good old-fashioned 80s values. And the soundtrack will have you humming. Now, I forget whatever Bryce said. To quote the theme song, the secret of my success is that I'm living 25 hours a day, nah, nah, which nah, may nah, explain nah, why I'm not that nah, successful. Nah, I spend nah, half that time nah, sleeping. Nah, 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 nah. <laughs> That's all I got. See, even he knows the song. Of course I he do. Knows it. Night Ranger. That, Night Ranger. Night Ranger is literally the first concert I ever went to. I went to it when I was like. 12 years old at Canada's Wonderland in Toronto. Movie? Did you see this movie before or after listening to Night Ranger? Oh, way, well after. Did they perform this song at the concert? <laughs> no, it wasn't out yet. This was... Uh, this Was Was it a, written for the movie? This was right I after Sister I believe it was Christian. by David Foster. Room, I believe. Nice. Yeah, this was right after... Uh, I saw them right after Sister Christian came out and exploded. There you go. Uh, no, anyway. yeah, that's right. But anyway. uh, yeah, Murray, I remember that movie when it came yes. out. I saw it in the theater. And I loved it. I don't doubt it. All right, and then. I, did not. I know you did not. You did not love it, or you did not? Yeah, even it. shut up for oh, two saw. minutes of me talking about it, apparently. <laughs> apparently. Yeah, it's Night Ranger. I love Night Ranger. Well, we got a lot. Yeah, well, so Mary loved the movie. So. so there. So there. Well, we got a lot of lists to talk about today, people. I'm not sure if you noticed, but <clears throat> we had an assignment if I if I seem to remember, does everybody remember our assignment from last week? I yeah. didn't until I saw the, the stupid uh, agenda that was given to me like yesterday, two hours before the podcast. Yeah, it's true. But you know what? I can't babysit you all the time. When we assign homework, you should write it down yourself. I don't really do homework. Well, maybe you'll remember that. Anyways, I did I did manage to cram, cram it in. in. Did you? Well, Murray, I watched half of it last night and half of it today. What? At, what a trooper. Like, the things he does for our podcast, people. I tell you, it's like he's a Superman or something. Although I only, some I only have to watch it to a certain point. Okay. And it was obvious who this 
Exactly. It's so obvious that oh, we may have some here. drops today, people. All right. So we were assigned to see the movie Raising Arizona because we needed to mesmerize off. So we're all going to write down who is the most mesmerizing. So we got three people we're working with here, which it's kind of a little unfair if one of them gets hunted because she wasn't in it for very long. Oh, you're releasing all of a sudden who you're saying. <laughs> I'm just so saying. The rules is rules, man. Rules right. is rules if she doesn't mesmerizing enough. So we got Nick Cage, yeah. John Goodman, yeah. and Francis McDormand. So, in the movie, no, thank you. In the movie Raising Arizona, the mesmerize off, and we're writing down who was the most mesmerizing in this movie. And we can't pick Holly Hunter, even though she was the most. Which is who I would have picked, picked, but whatever. Exactly, but she's not mesmerizing on the list, so <laughs> she should be. She no. should be on the list. Should should maybe. All right, count of three. You got it written down, Mer. Yeah. One, two, three. McDormand. Nick Cage. <laughs> John. Of course, you would say Nick Cage. Nick Cage Mer, was the most John Goodman was easy. And Mer got John three. Goodman. So we. Nick Cage was really all. Everybody's saying. Everybody saying I'm sorry, McDormand. She was the only one that was missing. Was I was she had like what two minutes? I was disappointed in the other. She's two like two minutes in that movie. What, yeah. what does that have to do with the price of tea in China? Same. She could be long she, to be she mesmerizing. Was really amazing okay. Movie. Well, then she should be. She had played Nick Cage's wife, and then, I said, "Yeah." Then she couldn't. Then why were? Why was she even part of this mesmerized off? And she wasn't in it long enough to you make. You tell me. I was your guys' idea, not mine. Exactly. It's the rules. I know, they, but she was but being mesmerizing. I, she was completely mesmerizing for the amount of time she was in it, and I don't care if she was in for ten seconds. She her performance was way better than those other two. Yeah, Nick Cage nah. was great. Nick Cage Nick was, was awesome. No, Nick Cage was also awesome. Actually, I liked his 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 uh, partner too. We have no clear winner. Actually, you know what? I thought everybody. William Forsythe is should be on the mesmerizing. Maybe that was. Yeah. Well, we got another one we have to talk about too, because even though we didn't get to see him. He has a credit and he spoke. So I'm throwing up. No, he's, he's got a credit that he spoke, but he didn't speak. He didn't. He's not in the movie. He's it's just like doing, it. just like doing voice yeah, acting. Yes, I know. So I, I don't know to, why. I did have to bring it up though, because if you got to see him, I bet you there was a scene that they actually showed up. So if we, I'm not even sure if it gets him off, anyways, because it, it was the mess. So it was his yeah, previous film. It, well, it doesn't. You're it doesn't right. matter. It's a new point it because does. he technically wasn't physically in the movie. Yes. But it was close. It was very, very close. I just had to bring it up. <laughs> I saw that you were going to bring it up, and I was like, why are you bringing this up? He just, <laughs> he just, it has to be mentioned. We, 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 should be tracking, we should be tracking our mesmerized dinner on doubt. Like, well, of course we are, but yeah. we've already established that that's not a thing. No, I know. But we the got voice to, acting. As soon as I saw the thing. credit for him, I'm like, what the hell? Spielberg, what are you doing? What are you doing? Why aren't you in this? So, uh, that brings up the elephant in the room talking with TD. Yes, that's the other that's one. That's the Kiwi in the room. And I believe, rage, so but I go back and look. But I believe his last one was a meh, and was I think it? I just gave him another meh. You did. So I think he's off as an actor. But he what was his, what is his last one? Um, just pulling it up. Okay, free guy. Uh, yeah. Did you get? Yeah, you gave Suicide Squad a. It was uh, a man. So by Taco with TV as an actor. Done. I'm sure he's heartbroken. He is heartbroken. He's probably going to roll over in his sleep and go, "Why did I make two men?" Oh, he'll just direct another awesome movie. Well, no, he's sure. still on as a director. No, he's, he's not on. He's made another. Well, movie. sorry, he's going to be on as a he director. He will be on. I don't can't see him making a bad movie. Yeah, but uh, yeah, as an actor, he's. Been in a couple of minutes. Although you guys both gave you guys both go no, gave no. those Mondo. No, yeah. no. Uh, I, he gave Mondo. I, I gave back. both I gave Mondo Mondos. to Suicide Squad, but I gave him. Oh, I gave him Mad. So, so he would have been safe for on. you, but for his performance was mad. But the movie. I feel was bad. I'm sorry, Taka, but I'm sorry. You were in two You should have liked Suicide Squad as much as Murray. I guess. That's right. Apparently, I couldn't though because it wasn't as good as you and Murray thought it was. I think it was even better. Yeah. I think it was. I think it was it was better than Free Guy for me. I huh. know it wasn't for Murray, probably, but no, it was close, but Free Guy was better. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. All right. Well, we'll try and find an assignment for next week because we gotta talk, take some of these people down. 
And oh, um, once again, we took no one down, even though it was Viola obvious. Davis and Francis McDormand. Just moved together. How come you can't she pronounce her name? By the way, why? It's just Mick Dormand. Mick Dormand. Yes, Thank not Nick McDormand. McDormand. That's I don't know who. What is that? I don't know. It's my. It's my nobody. I don't even think. I don't even think that's a name. It's my Toronto accent. I don't think anybody's named McDormand. Why not? I don't know. <laughs> maybe maybe there is. McDermott. I've never heard that. What's that? There's McDermott. So McDermott. There's lots of McDermott. Yeah. Maybe I've never I've never seen a McDermott. I, I just didn't call her Francis McDonald's. Anyways, just call her by what you anyway. name? It would be McDormand. Well, thank you. You're very welcome. Thank you. You've I'm not. I'm. I'm not I've sure. Seen that the air of my wits. I sense a hint of sarcasm in your in your your. Uh, really? Your thank you. I don't think I. I don't think I appreciate it. Well, I'm not normally sarcastic. So it's once again, sure. I'm sensing it. I know it can't possibly be true. <laughs> Anyway. All right. Well, are we doing more lists? No, we got uh, enough lists for today. I was going to bring up that I, that someone's lost his luster, but apparently you're still in love with him. So is that John Goodman? John David Washington. Oh, I still love him. I thought he was great. I thought he was just okay, and I thought he's just been okay for the last few movies, and I'm I'm not sure that I'm loving him anymore. Well, let's think about because I think he's a little hard. Yeah, but he's still in. Uh, he's he's not undoubted, anyways, right? No. No, he's just mesmerizing. He's just mesmerizing. And I'm not sure that he is anymore, but I'm going to give him one more movie. And then I'll he was amazing in Tenet. What? Come on. He was. He was, but. Uh, yeah. and Malcolm and Marie, he was also pretty good. The was movie wasn't good. good. The movie wasn't good. He was very good. Yeah, Tenet, he was fantastic. So he oh, had yeah. one little slip up because he was in Greece and the movie was not well directed. He was in Greece. <laughs> <laughs> he was in Greece. Back in. Oh, back in. He was in the country of Greece. Yeah, yeah he, he has been, he, he had votes for, for shooting in Greece. He was, he was in the musical. He was in the musical Greece 3, otherwise known as Beckett. Greece 3. With Francis McDormand. <laughs> that I would have seen. <laughs> yeah, right. I, I hope she never does make that movie, by the way. Let's move on. All right. All right, last week on Razor Dare, Bryce pulled the 2009 Lady Fight Club comedy Bride Wars from Jim's newly freshened up bag of torture. This week, Jim will get to choose to rage or dare. Check in with Bryce and see if this bride film has been dreaming of his wedding day or wishing he dug a little deeper into Jim's torture bag. Mmm. Bride Wars. Bride Wars. They made this. Once upon a time, there was two brides. <laughs> they made this. Um, I'll get right to it. This is the worst thing that either Kate Hudson or Anne Hathaway have ever done. And that is saying something as Kate Hudson was in Fool's Gold with Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and, and Anne Hathaway was in The Hustle with Rebel Wilson. <laughs> Watching this actually gave me a stomachache as I squirmed not believing that anyone could write so many one-dimensional plastic characters and stick them all in the same movie. <laughs> Is watching awful people doing and saying awful things supposed to qualify for humor? It did not, and this was perhaps the worst thing I've seen this year. And it was once and it once again reminds me of what this segment is supposed to be. Well played, Jim. This was 90 minutes of trash, complete with garbage performances from the likes of our two stars, as well as Chris Pratt and Candace Bergen. <laughs> And that was the dumb. And what was with the dumb narration throughout the whole thing from Bergen? It didn't even make any sense. <laughs> Why does she give a it's crap? Like Murphy Brown, she's Murphy Brown. Oh, uh, rage, 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 rage. Bride Wars was an appalling rage. Oh, uh, just so you know, FYI, yeah, it's gonna be worse for you, buddy. Remember when you thought mm -hmm. you know wanted to up the ante? Yeah. It's up all the way to the yeah. max, baby. I'm feeling comfortable with the crap you're gonna have to watch out of my bag. So, well, I think I'm gonna go in for a dare this week. Yeah, you're not with me to safe play. Uh, that uh, dare or that the, the audience, the dare audience, the audience the dare, dare bag. bag. Pull it out, Murray. You can pull my pull my bag. I wish I was pulling out of there because I get nothing but gold out of there. Uh, yeah, I pulled grease too out of there, so suck a bag of dicks, buddy. Okay, I will be watching next week 
Uh, chairman of the board. Wait, didn't we have 1998? I don't, I don't think so. I don't know. I never heard of it. Who's talking about it? Didn't we watch? Didn't we already no. dare by us? No, we didn't watch Chairman of the Board. I know, I watched it. Oh. Never heard of it. That's the carrot top. Oh, God. <laughs> Mr. Vegas. Uh, it might be okay. Yeah, who doesn't love carrot tops? It's a prop comic. He is with some serious guns. Yeah, he's. I don't think he. I don't think he had the serious guns in this movie, though. Oh, I guess this we'll is, have to wait I, for me to find out. I think this is pre-serious guns. I remember seeing this at one point, and I, it's one of the only movies that I only made it two thirds of the way through before I turned it off. Well, now you're gonna have to make it the whole way. Through. Uh, it does off. get a solid two point three on IMDb, though. Solid, solid gold, solid gold. Did you know his name is Scott Thompson? In real life? Yeah. Apparently. Carrot Tops is Scott Thompson. Scott, oh, what's Scott Tom Thompson. Thompson Scott is also a kid in the hall. Uh, what's Thompson. Scott Thompson's real name? It's, Scott actually, Thompson. it's actually Scott Thompson. So Scott Thompson and Scott Thompson yeah. are two different people. But they're the same. Hey, Raquel people. Welch is in this. Raquel Welch? This could be a winner, winner, chicken dinner. No. Uh, All right, people. All right. It's been a fun time today. Right. How, do you, how do you get a major release? Like if, I remember this being released in the theaters, and across the U.S. and Canada, it grossed one hundred eighty thousand dollars. Carrot total. top in it. Carrot top, baby. Well, thanks for just listening. Some super rage love to our members, Julian from It Goes Down in the VM podcast, James and Philip for their continued financial support to help us keep the lights on. Thanks to Senate Film Rage Crew, Leonard Conlon for his artistic vision of photography, and Leonard Conlon Photography. For Beck Skews for his human skills, Happy Potato Lady Podcast is news.com. For Tony from Flix X Rated, thanks, buddy, for being an amazing graphic design for our verbal masturbation art. For Nat from Crown Town Nerds for our Bryce Walken art. And lastly, thanks to our sponsors, Canyon Meadows Cinemas. Please go and support your local independent cinema near you as they desperately need your help as we come out of COVID. Find us on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at FilmRageYYC. Check out everything FilmRage at FilmRageYYC.com, including our merch site uh, for Redbubble and Public. See what we look like on our YouTube channel by searching FilmRage Podcast. We're always wanting to make this a rage blast for all this initial. Please comment, like, and subscribe, and send us emails to FilmRageCalgary at gmail.com. Here's to see terrible movies if you're a rage, but no matter what you do, please make a rage. Please believe. That's it for this week. Rage on. Hey, John. Hey, John.